the aluminum oxide to make this membrane is porous and it has some pore and it goes into the sandwich to form a filtration funnel and then the water sample will flow through the, the funnel. So our research found that there are on average um, a quarter of a million particles uh, including both microplastics and nanoplastics um, per liter of the bottled water. The, the particle will have their distinct patterns, will have their patterns indicating their chemical compositions. If the plastic particles breaks up, it does not stop at the micron size. It can actually go even smaller. So once it, the size goes below one micron, people call it nanoplastics, because now it's in, its size is in the nano range. And then the signal at each scanning point will be sent through the mirror I mean, whether we see it or not, it's out there. So it's better that we actually know how much is out there and what they are. Um, but I myself, as a scientist, I would want more data in terms of the toxicology study to actually know that um, whether how, um, how harmful it would be to my own body. This box is the two, host the two laser beams. And the laser beams will come with different frequencies will come out from this uh, laser box. Uh, laser in certain wavelength, the cavity length is a fixed number. That could be pretty. Yeah, so these are lenses, these are mirrors. The beams are pressing together, right? And then the difference is measured. And then when it's off, it reads a bad one too. So by right. subtracting. There are actually other techniques uh, people commonly use to study nanoparticles. Uh, it's called electron microscopy. They can actually see very tiny particles uh, in nanometer size. But they don't tell you um, if the particle is plastic or not. So our techniques is kind of the, com combines the both benefits, uh, being able to see smaller and then being able to tell that uh, what type of plastic chemical composition is that. So. Okay, I, need, I really need to turn on the microscope to actually move the objective down.